Dr. Sadr. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a dark age in Afghanistan. With a failed state, failed peace process, humanitarian catastrophe, increasing religious, racial, and ethnic injustice, and, and the a massive deprivation of human rights. However, pain, painful to that is a misunderstanding about the Taliban. The Taliban increasingly, among the policy circles, is now branded as a new state builders. Some others characterize them as an inevitable reality of Afghanistan. However, the Taliban does not establish a single monarchical state, nor a single party system. It's not also a military dictatorship. It's simply a religious and ethnic totalitarian regime. Now, what to do with a totalitarian regime? That has been a question for many of us in Afghanistan, but I'm sure for many of you. Since they came into power almost nine months ago, and a steady, sporadic, but spontaneous resistance has resisted the Taliban. Now, these were brave women, bureaucrats, young activists, primarily in Kabul and the north and northeast of Afghanistan. The women in Badakhshan set book shows and book bazaars. The other activists face-to-face -face stood against the brutal suppression of the Taliban in the streets of Kabul. Now, however, we understand from the other experiences of nonviolence resistance that a successful and long-term nonviolent resistance could not be sporadic, nor spontaneous, or steady. Rather, to be successful, it requires to be strategic. For that, I would suggest five points at least here. Number one, um, a successful nonviolent resistance requires political defiance. What does it mean to have a political defiance? Increasingly, those who are in the Taliban circle, but also the one who are apologic, apologists for them, suggest any form of engagement and cooperation with them. Now, engagement and cooperation under a totalitarian regime simply creates atomized individuals who learn how to be submissive. And such kind of submissive citizens will, of course, lead to sustainability of a totalitarian regime. On the other hand, political defiance is non-cooperation, actively, wisely, and strategically. So I would suggest that the first step against the Taliban would be not obedience, not passivity. Rather, it would require constant activism to mobilize masses and the people. Second, another strategy against a totalitarian regime would be to overthrow it, to disintegrate it. Overthrowing and disintegrating, disintegrating a totalitarian regime which suppresses every single human being's fundamental and basic rights does, does require kind of policy which should, first of all, of course, understand the nature of this regime, but also cautious step towards dis disintegrating it. Any kind of oppressive regime, be it colonialism or racism, how do you encounter with it? How did Indian resist colonialism? how did South Africans resisted racial discrimination and many other parts of the world. The same should be against the Taliban. They are not different. Thirdly, a non-violent resistance against the Taliban should also, be, should also adopt a strategic approach, which should respond to some key questions. Number one, how to engage with the Taliban? What are the key tools to resist the Taliban. Now, on engagement and, 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 and disengagement with the Taliban, 
which is quite vibrant in policy circles here in Washington, but many other capitals. Um, we have to be cautious. Let me quote a scholar for you, Gainey Sharp, whose approach towards nonviolence uh, resistance has been successfully adopted in many other countries. He says that engaging with the totalitarian regimes could be risky. The Democrats and the liberals should be cautious when the stakes are quite high and when there is a symmetry of power between the, the one who are oppressor and the one who are liberals. Now, our stakes with the Taliban are quite high and there's quite evident asymmetry of power between a small group of people, I mean, in terms of power, but not in terms of number, who are suppressed and the brutal Taliban. Now, in such kind of situation, of course, engaging with the Taliban will not reduce the level of repression. Rather, it will continue the, the level of repression. Fourth, a nonviolent resistance should also entail some sort of breathtaking exercises. Of course, there will be pain. There will be suffering. But what I would suggest is that nonviolent resistance should avoid hatred. It's fighting hatred. A nonviolent resistance is a fighting hatred without destitution. So we, the people of Afghanistan, I'm not here asking the international community to send more troops to Afghanistan to fight the Taliban. I think it's the, we have the agency if the world allow us to face the Taliban and to resist Taliban actively, both in nonviolent ways and also in military ways. Finally, both Taliban and those who support them present us quite complicated challenge. Such kind of challenge, I think, does not have predefined, pre-written solutions. It requires nuances. It requires critical thinking. In times we might engage with the Taliban, that might be inevitable. In times we need to resist with them. However, the reductionist approach, which currently most of us has proposed to support Taliban, which leads to the consolidation of their regime, which of course leads to deprivation of many, many more human beings' rights, will not be the solution. Rather, a nuanced approach will endorse nonviolent resistance against the Taliban. And I will stop here. Thank you so much.